I got an email from a whistleblower. Things aren't what they seem at the new Wilderness Wildlife Reserve. A random Appalachian 468. My name is Jordan Richter. I'm an investigative journalist for an independent media outlet. Ever since I had to use my wits, an old tape recorder and some fake weed I made from my mother's arugula plant to catch a few bullies and their lies back in middle school. I've been obsessed with exposing corruption. I've spent years chasing the truth, going undercover, and even doing some modest hacking. Mostly I do political stuff, scandals, cover-ups, bribery. Every politician has a skeleton in their closet. And if you look hard enough, they usually have a few dozen. It's not out of the ordinary for people to send me evidence of bad behavior on a potential suspect. Like hotel receipts, photos, bank statements, that kind of thing. Don't get me wrong, I never publish anything I get without verifying it. I always look at every case as hearsay until proven correct. You can really mess up someone's life with a false accusation. And as someone who's been through that twice, I don't want to be that guy. Besides... Sometimes the stuff people send is just too vague, not convincing, or obviously fake. But every, every, every once in a while, I find something really deep. Something my editor would call beyond the pale. Something dark. This is one of those times. I recently received a recording and transcript of a phone call that the whistleblower, who chose to remain anonymous, secretly recorded and sent, me, sent to me via email. The first time I listened to it, I was shocked. I had to re-listen several times, just to be sure I heard it right. Due to technical difficulties with the recording, I can't post it here, but I can share the transcript. If what is contained within is even remotely true, then anyone who lives in Barron County, Ohio, needs to get in contact with either their local travel agent, or perhaps a National Guard unit. The following is the transcript, exactly how it was sent to me, word for word. The recording begins, but the sound of a phone ringing can be heard before a handset is picked up with a soft click, and a man speaks. Sheriff's office, am I help you, sir, or second man's voice can be heard shouting through the phone. Or now, what the heck is going on in your district? The chair creaks and it sounds as though voice one is clearing his throat. <clears throat> Mr. Caronte, I... Shut your mouth before I shut it for you. Don't you know not to use my name on the phone, you hopeless lump? I gave you a job to do one job, and now I'm hearing all kinds of noise about things going wrong down there. You think my group funded your campaign so these kinds of mistakes could happen? Sir, I assure you my deputies are doing everything we can to... Your deputies? Do you have any idea what I just got reading? got done reading? One of your loudmouth deputies is blab blabbing online about some seeing a techno in the freaking woods. Thousands of people viewed his post. Or now. If just one of them does any amount of digging, our entire operation could be jeopardized. The sound of a pencil snapping in half can be heard. I I'll find the responsible man and deal with him, sir. It won't happen again. You better not. As for the park, why didn't you seize control of New Wilderness like I directed? We need that installa installation as a base for operations, and those two bit rangers are still running around firing guns everywhere, stirring up the herds and causing the anomalies to migrate. I want them gone, Murnau. I don't care how you do it. Just get rid of them. Sir, with all due respect, the night rangers outnumber us two to one, and they're the only ones keeping the technos and organics at bay. I've lost two men already to the echo spiders, and we can barely keep the roads blocked as it is. Civilians are finding their way in, and every one of them that survives has to be silenced and discredited. I need more men. I have a thousand of my best fighters on standby as we speak, but I need live specimens for now. The more the merrier. We can't get them in those polo shirt wearing Reddit cops or killing them all. Ever since that Cromwell girl popped the last Oak Walker, we've had nothing but spikes and the electromagnetic satellite readings from your area. Time is of the essence if we want to contain this thing. The rest of the night rangers. <sighs> Clear the new wilderness reserve of all personnel and prepare the site for the ELSIAR to move in. If I move on the park, the rangers might resist. I know the head of security there and that old marine won't give up without a fight. This could spark a real shooting war right in our backyard. And if the 
public finds out. If the public finds out that there are moon-eyed freaks stumbling around in the woods, they'll start the shooting war themselves. For heaven's sake, use your head for something other than a hat rack. You want to flush the rangers out, drive a herd into them, them? Drive a herd into them and let the freaks do their job. Once everyone's dead, we'll come in and clean up. No one will ever have to know it was you. Look, this would be a whole lot easier if we had more help. I'm not a miracle worker. Rumors spread every time we take another casualty on the force. It's a small county, sir, with even smaller towns. All it takes is one person talking, and I can't contain it. Just give me 50 guys, kitted out and ready to go, and at least then we can man the roadblocks. There's a long pause, and a clock can be heard ticking in the background. Fine. I can send 50, but no more until the LZ is clear. The situation is rapidly deteriorating, and the more men we move, the more attention we'll attract. We can't seal the breach soon. We could face an ecological disaster that would make Chernobyl look like Christmas in the Bahamas. I don't need to remind you what we'll be forced to do if that happens. Clean sweep. Exactly. I won't risk creating another Black Crow Island. The press is distracted by the upcoming elections right now, but if we make one slip up, we'll have reporters and homegrown watchdogs breathing down our necks all across the country. We can't afford another disaster zone. Especially not after what happened in Canada. I understand, sir. As soon as the reinforcements arrive, I'll have New Wilderness captured for you within a week, three days tops. Time is critical for now. Do not disappoint me on this. Get control of your department, shut the Night Rangers down, and keep the anomalies contained until we get there. I'll work on suppressing any more online activity regarding your area and run some interference in case a few wannabe private eyes start googling things they should. Yes, sir. Oh, and one more thing. The leak in your department? It's some moron named Haman. I don't care how you do it or where. Just make him disappear. Now. Hamond, huh? Should have known. Believe me, sir. It's as good as done. There is a m muted click from the other end of the line, and the recording ends. Naturally, I dove into the internet and started hunting for information as soon as I read the transcript. Try as I might, I couldn't find anything about a Barron County, Ohio in the mainstream press or on any map anywhere. There is a Barron County in Wisconsin, but nowhere in the foothills of Appalachia. Almost as if it's been selectively deleted from every record available. As for the New Wilderness Wildlife Reserve, I did manage to locate its homepage. Just before a strange computer glitch made it unavailable. Just last week, the park announced it wouldn't be holding a tour season this year and that all grounds were closed to the public. It also issued a call for more volunteers for its security department, offering a whopping $40 an hour to anyone who stayed longer than a week. Along with free room and board, sadly I didn't get the chance to find any contact information, the site crashing in what I suspect was a coordinated DDoS attack from an unknown source. What really stood out to me about the whole thing was the capitalization and the transcript of the bizarre words used by the two callers. Technos organics, and the vague threat known as the breach. These seem to refer to some kind of animal species, judging by the use of the word herds, but it was hard to make heads or tails of it. My search in the regular web turned up nothing until I stumbled across this site and found four posts, three of them belonging to a girl named Madison Cromwell, and one belonging to a sheriff's deputy, Sean Hammond. From what I can gather in reading their accounts, both claim to have seen creatures of gargantuan and supernatural proportions. If there is any truth to them, then it might be reasonable to infer that the creature Miss Cromwell encountered, called the Oak Walker, and the transcript by the mysterious Mr. Cronti, was likely inorganic. Due to its plant-like characteristics, this creature seemed to be highly intelligent and even possibly telekinetic with the ability to create a contr and control smaller humans as creatures referred to by Cromwell as puppets. It is also important to note that in both Haman's account and in the secret phone call, the creature known as the Big One, or the Oak Walker, is described as a type of apex predator, whose downfall contributed largely to the explosion of anomaly activity outside of the regular area. It is entirely possible that Miss Cromwell did in fact succeed in killing, that, in, in killing the creature, which in turn allowed lesser species to thrive in, in its absence and spill out into the environment. 
In the second account, the strange metallic monstrosity that attacked Officer Roman seems to fit rather well into the techno category, given its electronic and me mechanical attributes. This very well could be one of the Echo Spiders brought up by Sheriff Warnow. While there isn't much information to go by, it seems that organics and technos are merely subcategories of the various paranormal beings that came from the breach, and these anomalies present a clear and present danger to all human beings around them. A mention of electromagnetic readings powerful enough to be observed by satellites also seems to indicate that there is a signif there is significant environmental disturb disturbance going on in the area, which may have contributed to the or origins of these species, or perhaps is a byproduct of their existence. This, of course, was troubling to say the least, but I wanted to know more, and for that I'd have to find the people who had supposedly witnessed these occurrences firsthand. Armed with two complete names, I info-hunted and found some alarming results. Madison Cromwell's family recently moved from Black Oak to an unknown location somewhere deep in the hills of, of Idaho. For a family of relatively low income to undertake such an abrupt move, they were either pursuing better income or desperately fleeing some form of danger. I have no idea if Madison is alive or not. All of her social media accounts have been deleted, and none of her contacts on the various platforms seem to know if she quit. Disappeared the night, the last night of her job, or still lying low somewhere. In the case of Sean Hamad, it was announced early yesterday morning that a gunfight broke out in the Barron County Sheriff's Office between members of the department, resulting in three dead and four injured. Sean Hamad is said to be still at large, charged with the rather serious crime of organizing domestic terrorism, though no more details have been provided on that. One of the casualties was Officer James Walker, the partner Hamad referenced in his account on this site. Walker was shot 12 times in the firefight and taken to the Black Oak Regional Hospital. According to the, uh, to the hospital rec reports, he died of his wounds on the operating table soon after. For such violence to break out between fellow peace officers and for such drastic charges to be leveled, there must be serious issues in the Barron County government, which le lends more than a little credence to the validity of the whistleblower's claims. But it gets worse. Upon looking into the reference to Black Crow Island, I could only find a passing mention about an explosion that destroyed an abandoned sanatorium on a small island off the coast of British Columbia. Not much was provided in terms of detail, except that two people had been seen fleeing the island on a rowboat, but were never apprehended. How this is connected, I don't know. I do not know, but if it was important enough to mention in the phone call, I can only assume it had ties to the same forces at work in Barron County. As for the vague ELSAR group, of which Mr. Caranti appears to be a major player in, I found nothing that matched the description of this, of his lethal capabilities. No large-scale private security companies hail by that name, and while I have no doubt it's an acronym for something, I don't know what it could be. Whoever they are, I seriously doubt the fighters of ELA ELSAR are interested in the well-being of Barron County, or the employees of the New Wilderness Wildlife Reserve. That means it leads me to this moment, as I type the finishing touches on my entry. Normally, I would say to refer to my article in our media website for the rest of the story, but my editor was found dead just this morning, with a bullet in his head, at the back of his head. I have a well-adapted gut feeling when I been asking too many questions, stirred around in too many pots, and I know they're coming for me. Random cars have been following me to and from home, strangers keep watching my apartment building, and I found a tracking device stuck to the trunk of my car today. Maybe this little post will garner enough attention to alert the people of Barron County to their in imminent danger. Perhaps the New Wilderness Night Rangers will read this in time and find a way to avoid whatever horrible plans Sheriff Warnow and E.L. S.A.R. have for them. Regardless, my part in this investigation is at an end. My wife and two boys are waiting for me. At the predetermined spot I arranged over the burner phone I bought at our local phone kiosk. I have withdrawn all my money in cash and have booked flights for three different countries, bus tickets for four different cities, and a rental car with three sets of fake license plates. My social media accounts are all deleted and my entire family has shed their personal phones and 
I even dyed my hair. Is someone reading this is haunting me? Good luck. I've dug up people who didn't want to be found for half my life, and my family is at stake here. You'll never catch us. And if you're someone who lives in Barron County, or heck, anywhere near Ohio, all I can say is, brace for impact. Hey guys, and thank you so much for enjoying today's story. Well, again, I hope you do, but thank you for watching it. Of course, if you did enjoy, please feel free to leave a like as it does help the channel innumerably and does get the gospel in our people's feeds as well as subscribing as it does help the channel a ton. And we are, of course, trying to get those subs by the end of the year. It'd be a big blessing from the Lord if you guys did so. Did so. Of course, um, repent of your sins, trust in the good Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart, soul, and strength. Read the Holy Bible daily, pray daily, and evangelize the people. And make sure to go in the description or in the pinned comments, read the million dollar questions and how to become born again as well. Please go to the Discord as well as check out some of the streams. We tre streamed a lot of GTA 5 last night with an awesome godson guy that helped us out a ton. Let me know what you guys think. I don't consider that. I think it's like an interesting way, but I don't consider it cheating. I don't think. But let me know what you guys think about that. Um, and yeah. Um, stay tuned for more, y'all. Until next time. This is Ninja Gamer. Signing off.